Welcome to Pin the Q Productions. If you are interested in the culture of the fire service and keeping tradition alive, you have come to the right place. Now sit back and relax with your brothers and sisters and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pin the Q Podcast. We are here in Allendale, New Jersey, which is pretty north. Way north. North. Uh, Ray likes to call it south of the Mason-Dixon, but this is definitely oh, this north. Is north. We're north. We're definitely north. Um, so, Rob, thanks for inviting me into your home. Yeah, thanks for coming up. This is a trip, man. It is a trip. It is a trip. <laughs> but it was a good trip. We had a, we had a good time talking and uh, right. you know chum, chumming it up on the way up here. So it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Um, so the first thing I noticed is that uh, yeah, hundred percent volunteer department. Yep, it is. Uh, we're a small department. Uh, we run an engine, a squad, a rescue, and a, a tower ladder. That that's a quint, you know. But uh, about three square mile town. I mean, it's it's a unique town. I mean, we got a, high, a regional high school, a bunch of small elementary schools, smaller schools. Um, a lot of high occupancy during the daytime. We got a bunch of. Uh, more corporate industrial kind of stuff on uh, the border of the highway over there, and plus the cool train behind us. Yeah, you're right. You got the main transit line right behind you. So. Yeah, which is which is pretty cool. We've you know, <laughs> been listening to that train for a while. Uh, we got to watch you guys uh, drill tonight, which was cool. We're gonna actually show some of that to uh, to you guys uh, in, in a moment. But um, before we get too far into this, right. Rob, I, I know who you are, right? And, and Ray knows who you are, my man Ray <laughs> over there. Um, but why don't you tell everybody who you are and? Uh, yeah, so uh, my name's Rob Pollock. I'm a uh, lieutenant and the training officer here in Allendale. Uh, I'm also on the job in Passaic on Lotta 1. Um, started here as a junior, 2000, 2009, so 10 years now. Um, and you know what, I just, I don't know, I, I look at myself as kind of different in the fire service because I look at the fire service as more of a, you know, there's a lot of guys who are like, it's only experience-based, it's only this or that. But what about the educational side of it? You know, because, you know, a lot of people don't know, and I don't brag about it, but I got a master's from Arizona State. It's Arizona State, but it's still a master's, you know. Um, you still put the work in, man. Right. Got to work. You got to hustle a little bit behind right. the books. But, you know, I like. I'm, one thing I like is to try to bridge that gap between, you know, the studies out there and just pulling an academic approach to the fire service. And that's kind of how the whole flow event thing um, blossomed back in the day you know when i was growing up here me and another buddy of mine pete who's a uh a maryland state fire marshal officer i'm sorry if i messed up how that's said but uh you know we kind of used to literally vent about issues in neighboring departments and then it kind of evolved into a training discussion and from there you know he went and uh rode in pg for uh branchville and i stayed up here and it just kept evolving, the conversations. Right, right. Guys started joining the conversations. Group text started. Group me's were growing up. The uh, Facebook pages started blossoming. And then a couple of years ago, you know, we died off. We all tried to get our own jobs, get hired in certain areas. And then now, the last couple of years, it seems like we're back on the grind. You're, def- okay. you're definitely on the so. map. You know, you, <laughs> you, talk to, uh, you talk to people in the fire service that, mm-hmm. you know, the up-and-comers are, are the OGs. And uh, people know who you are. People Allegedly. know Flow and Vent. I mean, as a matter of fact, um, on the way here to right. this episode, you know, Ray didn't know who you were, who we were going to say. And I, I said, oh, Flow and Vent. He goes, oh, nice, nice. So it's like, you know, you're known in the fire service. Which it's crazy. Is, it's which crazy is, to think that, you know. Because yeah. even uh, yesterday, myself and uh, Mikey, the other main voice on the podcast, went out to uh, Progress. Not Progress, 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 Pennsylvania. I check out Station 32. And, you know, my buddy out there... Uh, Kyle Schrausbaugh, he's the assistant chief out there. He 
you know, introduced us as, oh, these are the flow and vent guys. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we know that. Like, it's a weird, and it's weird. Yeah. Like, you never thought it would turn into something where people know you by the page name or just, because right. essentially it was just a venting, complaining group that guys would toss ideas back and forth. And and now uh, now you're taking a serious approach to training. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, I mean, as you guys saw today, like, we're, we're trying things. You know, it's not about, I'm not here to preach anything crazy but things that we've picked up on in different regions different towns it'd be nice to kind of have that discussion and allow people to understand the differences that are out there and right. make their own opinion and decision on how to do something and that's where i was meant in the beginning about the academic academic approach right about you know high school is very you read a book and you answer the question from the chapter you go to college and it turns into you read all this stuff and you develop your own idea. You still got to get to a certain answer, but they let you find your way there. And right. when I when I did my master's program, you know, I, they let me run with it. I was working with the, uh, I believe he's the captain out in uh, Phoenix, uh, Scott Somers. He was my, uh, you know, advisor on the whole process of, of the program. And I just told him I was going to write up a, a train derailment SOG for this for this town because we didn't have anything, you know. And, and it's and if you know, not to interrupt right, you, right. but. But just so our viewers understand, it's literally yeah. I could I can't throw for anything. Yeah, it's but literally to I my left. Throw yeah. a ball to it. It's uh, it's right behind me. Right. Hopefully, well, not hopefully. I'm sure you're going to hear some train hear go, action here go by. <laughs> oh, like my cousin Vinny. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what it's like. Um, but yeah, you know, they let me run with a uh, a train derailment SOG program and it turned into like I mean, a 50 page thesis essentially on besides the IAP just all the research of access points and who to call and you know it turned into developing mutual aid programs and responses that we don't use them but the potential is there to use it so it turned into a big project plus all the other you know relevant classes you take but well that's that's great about the the college part of the fire service right. now is that we can use that right. in our advantage to right. develop SOGs and to make sure policies are in place exactly. and, you know and that's all going to help people in the in the in the back end right. if you will what what I noticed today uh, or tonight rather was right. that, you know, when you were giving the instructions to the, the members here mm -hmm. at, at the company, um, you know, you were very serious and very passionate about what you were right. doing. You're making sure that they all understood. And what I did like about the way you were teaching mm -hmm. was, you took your time. Right. With eh. each with each person, I got you. For, you know what I mean. Like okay. I, I noticed you took your yeah. time with each person. Where you know you weren't just running through the drill right. to get it done. You were like right. making sure they understood. Yeah, I mean, the theory. And, and that's what's funny to see and hear from guys, you know, like yourself that just watch. Right. You know, because that's how I look at it. Is I don't try to, I won't give you the pieces, even if it's stretching line, you know, grab this nozzle, pull this way, go that way. It's, these are the ways you could do it. Just get to that door the best you can. Right. I know there's places that teach, you know, you got to run the line this way, that way, always, but I just want you to understand what to grab, why, when. And eventually, you know, you don't have to hold the person's hand through it the whole time. Like, you know, in these evolutions, I wasn't sitting there saying, eh, don't put the tourniquet there, don't cut, cut like this. No, you know what? These are your tools. I right. told you what to do. Well, that's what I like about happen. it. You, you, let, them, you right. let them do it. And, and, and I, I think that's how people learn, honestly. Right, and it builds confidence in the guys. Yes. And, and the girls, you know. They, because what's going to happen on, on a fire, well, fire I mean, band, they're going to, like, look for someone to help them. No, you got to do the job. Right. You're absolutely right. So, I mean, it's, I don't know. T tell me a little bit about, about Allendale, oh. the demographics of the town. Tell right. me about the uh, fire load. Um, this town is, uh, you know, like Captain Freeman said, it's very unique. It's um, You're going to get in trouble for that. I am going to hear it. I'm probably going to get a text message before this is even published. <laughs> um, well, he was sending me pictures already, the one that he was yeah. floating around. I was like, ah, he found out already. <laughs> but uh, this town's about, let's call it three square miles. Um, mostly, it's a suburban town. Got a regional high school, like you said before. You got the main train rail part of Route 17. We really don't have it. We have a nice corner of it. Technically, you know, we can come help out in that area. But uh, a lot of schools, a lot of uh, kind of industrial corporate areas, you know, it's, a lot is packed into this little town. Um, one small, I don't know if you guys came in through uh, that area, but, you know, we got like little Main Street USA. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a growing town. It, it used to be a lot very blue collar back in the day. Now it's kind of it seems like it's turning over. We can okay. see what the guys were bringing in. You know, it's not the football players, the, the young kids anymore. It's kind of you can tell. Like you know, our newest our newest member is a, a guy that works in New York City. 
No kidding. Kind of like a corporate great dude. Went through fire one, did, you know, took the time, dedicated everything. Great guy, but you can tell it's... Yeah, it's different. It's not DPW guys or... Hard, well, because back in the day, I right. mean, you know, you're, young, you're a younger guy in the right. fire service. I mean, back in the day when when the volunteer fire service was like really a thriving thing. Right. Um, that's what it was for the right. most part. It was like guys that worked in town right. and they can come while they're working and, right. and, that, and that type of thing. And guys weren't working two and three jobs exactly. to support their yeah. families. Yeah. Um, it was a much different time. And now you're starting to see that uh, you're getting an, almost a different type right. of volunteer. Right. Like you just said, the guy from, right. from New York City. Right. And you know what? We still have them. I mean, you saw the guys that were teaching. We had yeah. a senior county instructor as one of our ex-chiefs. He's here. You saw guys that work EMS nonstop, still ride the rig here, young juniors. You know, so we still have the diversity. How are you keeping your membership alive? What are you doing here? Uh, training. I mean, that, that's one of my big pushes. Like, you know, when I said uh, back when we did the first recording, yes. tried. <laughs> um I think that's one of my, and I'm, I feel, you know, that I'm pretty humble. And I, you know, like you said earlier with, you know, flow events growing, I think I'm a kind of quiet person. Um, but it seems that guys are attracted to the training. So, yes, the call volume is maybe 200, 250 calls on a great year. So we don't have that, you know, crazy number to bring people in. But, you know, when you have quality training, once what we do is we'll do a drill night and a cleanup night and rotate. So you'll get... Um, 24 drills, 24 cleanups, hopefully on a good year. Um, you know, I just try to make the best 24 drills you get in a year. So, yeah. there you go. That's the There's train. the train. Love See, I, it. I told you it was coming. It's character. And it's here. But, um, but you know what's cool about that? I don't have to import the train noise when we have the <laughs> your right. logo, your train logo right behind right. us. Um, but, yeah, the, the training is what, is what I believe is what brings people in. And right. that's word of mouth. I mean, we've had kids join from neighboring departments that don't live in town i mean you know, i don't live in town anymore but what brings us here is, the, is pretty much the training we'll either go to other facilities we've gone to rockland county new york we work with guys from there we work with guys from everywhere and even if it's you know bringing a drill together with guys from west milford way you know Passaic county up there we'll do an ice rescue drill with them every couple of years just to you know rebuild the relationship say hey how you doing you guys have ice show us how you do it we'll show you how we do it thanks yeah, because you have you have right. uh, water here. Right, we got. Yeah. I mean, we got Crestwood Lake, which is a big swimming hole for people, and then there's a bunch, a lot of uh, excuse me, there's a lot of small areas in town that have bodies of water that you just kind of, you know, you won't know until you see. Yeah, kind of things in people's yards and whatnot. Um, so, and you know, the two trenchels flood out every every rainstorm we get. The trestles are shot. You know, what is it Monday night here? They're, uh, they had a electrical fire. In the yeah, building. That's, yeah. Right <laughs> I'm here. sure everybody's seen in the buff groups, you know. Yeah, yeah. Every, cause, so. well, well, it's funny because <laughs> Ray sent me a text like, "Hey, brother, are you sure we're going up there?" Uh, <laughs> and then he showed me the he screenshot of the fire at the firehouse. I'm like, "Oh man, that's right. why I reached out to you." Right. You're like, yeah, I think we're still good. Yeah. So I mean, you know, with the train trail issue, the guys were coming in from the other direction, and you know, they were told in the beginning, guys, this trestle's flooded out. You got to come in through Waldeck or something. So you know, we have our water challenges. We're not as big as Mawa, where you have the Rampo River coming through. But being able to do non-moving ice water and standing water rescues, you know, it's it's still one of our I call it a strong suit here, you know, and, and like you know, like you saw today, we're we're kind of developing that maneuvers machine, yeah, impalement, weird scenarios. It's smart though. Yeah, you, you have to think outside right. the box now, you and it keeps people involved. You know, how yeah. many times? And I'm not trying to knock it. How many times can you run the 1410 drill? Pull out, hit a hydrant, stretch through lines. You know, you, how many times a year can you do that? How many times can you do an extrication where you take the doors, you take through a fire? Let's put it on the side. Let's put it upside down. You know, and I and I'm a big believer in like you know the way you grow up playing sports and the practice methods there, getting thousands of reps and two a days, all that. But then, yeah, you have the muscle memory. But what about your mind? You know, you got to keep the brain and the, and the thinking process involved. Right. So if I break it up with one of these drills where guys have to actually, like, you know, you saw an ex-chief take yeah. the charge. Like, you know, the guy is mostly a chauffeur for us, but for him to take charge of a kid that's got five years on, a junior, and, a, you know, and an, I'm sorry, and another ex-chief, it's cool to see that. It's really good that, to see that. that, that brain yeah. process yeah, go you're, through. You're, you're breaking up that gap right there, right. you know, and that's that's – that's good to see, you know. Seems so like it's it, it, it's definitely <laughs> working, man. And the one other thing I'll, I'll mention quick about about mm-hmm. this particular firehouse is, you know, we while you're doing the lecture part right. or PowerPoint part of the the training, uh, 
we had an opportunity to walk around and, and in doing so I saw all these photographs and right. what I love about this fire department is the the way you're preserving the history. Right. I'm trying. Of right. Allendale. I mean it's cool. I mean there's right. a lot of cool I mean not not to mention the mini museum right. you have. Right. You know, with yeah. the with the hand cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, just looking inside the glass, I mean the stuff that the fire company preserved right. is so cool. I'm trying. Yeah. yeah normally so cool. we have you know, in recent years with the uh, the ladder truck being uh, sold, the new one coming in and whatnot, we used to have a uh, our Mac used to sit behind the three two over there. Um, but I mean, that would have been another cool thing to see. Yeah, that would have been cool. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's Allendale. So so <laughs> take take me to uh, you know take me to your job now. You what's it like uh, getting into the fire service? Mm -hmm. You know, being being around the guys that've been around on the right. job for for a long time. Right. Is it difficult sometimes to bridge that gap as far as new training ideas versus yeah. standing practices in the fire service? Yes and no. Um, my house is awesome. I mean, my guys, you know, two of them got my lieutenant and uh, my senior guy got, I hope I'm not screwing this up, I'll hear it tomorrow, but 19 years in the city. It's, you know, and they're volunteers outside right. of it, so they got more time besides that. But there's never a, a ball ball. I mean, they break chops, but, yeah, but that's, you have to do that. You know, I'll get the, that's a hey, of passage. you know, it's funny. Rue will look at me and be like, Hey, you see this on Instagram yet? I'm like, you're on phone, Ben, aren't you? Cause yeah, let's go try it out. I'm like, ah, you got me, you know, that kind of <laughs> ball busting. But you know what? I like it cause it keeps everybody involved and, you right. know, and it's also a check on me and, you know, check on my guys that put stuff out on phone event. Cause you know, people are watching and, and it's being vetted right which is so important. it's yeah. yeah you know sometimes you see these things pop up like who are these guys who's that guy what's the quality behind your work i'm like you know what it makes flown vent flown vent is the fact that we have all these minds it's not just me it's not just mike you know or any of the other guys it's everybody discusses and we'll put something up so it's a complete you know i look at it from a career side this guy looks at it as a chief this guy looks at it as a, as a young member this guy so looks a lot of eyes a, on right it. yeah so it's good to get that different perspective. And somehow it's working. Right. So, I mean, but yeah, I love work. I mean, yeah. So. I, obviously, this, <laughs> I mean, obviously firefighting you know, right. to you is what it is to me. It's a passion. Right. Um, you know, I love speaking to like-minded guys mm -hmm. and, and having the same interest. Right. You know, the same, the same passion, if you right. will. What, is there one thing in the fire service for you that is like, you're it, you're zen? Is there one thing or is it everything? I mean, uh and it is a funny story. Uh, I got to bring him up again, but Captain Freeman, when I was a probe, he just dropped it right on me. He's like, hey, rescue Rob. I was like, how does this guy know my name, my nickname? That was my nickname as, as a junior, as a probe growing up. I had, I was like, where, where did this guy figure this out? You know, yeah. we, we know how the, the fire, fire service, service is. The fire service is a small we know, network. We man. know how it is now. <laughs> but, I mean, I love rescue stuff. I love, um, you know, but then again, one day I put out a um, in, our, in our rescue company podcast. We did that one, and then guys were chiming in from all around the country, like, well, what's your rescue company? Like, to me, it's the Northeast version of it. You know, it's the fast team guys, the progressive, the guys that save the guys. You guys are structurally sound, and you're also going to do some, you know, high angle, some ice water, some extrications, and some, you know, crazy people things. Right. Some guys are like, well, in our area, the rescue company is strictly the hazmat guys that are on roofs and ropes and upside down. I'm like, that's not my forte. Yeah. So I guess for me to be like the rescue bot, man, I love the truck. I mean, now being just able to go to work and work on a truck, come here when it's in service, work on this truck, and man, I love roofs. I mean, I grew up working uh, for my dad's business in, in uh, woodworking and stuff like that. So like, I was always kind of around building construction, but now, you know, once you're in the moment, you're on a roof doing a cut or something. Like it just everything just snaps. You know, you kind of have the expectations from. All those years of growing up, seeing roofs being put up, old homes and new homes, that it kind of makes it a little, you know, a little more. You don't, have, you never want to use the word comfortable. Right. Yeah. You're never but, really truly comfortable, but but you know, you're a little bit more confident in your next couple of steps. Yeah. So, but again, you know, I love this rig. This this squad thing's cool. So I guess let's call it the rescue squad guy. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I like it all. I mean, well, the reason I ask is, you know, you talk to some guys, and then you know, you, you know, especially guys on a the job, they're going to be like, oh the truck or right. or, or the right. engine or right. rescue i mean there's really right. no you know but and then you get the guy that goes i just love all of it you know right i guess if i were to ask myself that same question mm -hmm. i guess my favorite part of the job i guess is is the rescue right right <laughs> and and i and i like the 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 crashes mm -hmm. 
aspect of right, firefighting. Right. I love cutting cars. I love, right. and I love more than just cutting cars. I love getting when when people or mm-hmm. you know victims are just in a really precarious situation, right. and you have to literally sit and for a second just figure out how in the hell am I going right. to get this guy out of here, right? You know, or girl. And those are the ones I really love. I love the challenging right. ones where you're tunneling. You're really digging in. Oh yeah, really like know. you really have to use almost every every you know tool on on the, on the rig. Right. You got to figure out. And you Th- got, those right. are the fun ones for me. Yeah, you know? and, and, you, and you mentioned that it's like you know at work we only have four engines and two trucks, but the history of Ladder One is it used to be called Alert Hook and Ladder Rescue Company, like oh, no back kidding. in eighteen. 18- 71. That's cool. Right? So, Good you know, we're well, that's what I'm saying. When I made, well, <laughs> here's the shout out with that. When I made these shirts, we, we dug into the history of, you know, prior to them even being part of the city when they were their own little companies, their neighborhood companies. Like, so, like, you know, this thing we put the, the year back, you know. Cool. Shamrock. I, I, obviously, touch, but. obviously, you know, the history part <laughs> of the fire service is big for me. It's, you know, but I love seeing right. stuff like that, you know. The details. Absolutely. You, know, you always yeah. hear attention to detail growing up, and in the, all these academies now, it's, it's always pay attention. So, you know, you look at the rigs, it's like even the pinstriping on this, it goes from blue, and then in the gold leaf, you see black, red, black, white. You know, that was on the old rig. No kidding. And I even, honestly, I was like, all right, let's. Let's keep it simple, but the guy's like, "No, we got to put a blue pinstripe on it because it matches the one, and it just that's cool. It's just the way it is here. That's the tradition. That's the history. But that that we have to continue on, right? You know, and I think that it should be the message now that you know, and it's harder now for the younger guys mm-hmm. and girls coming into the fire service because unless they have someone directly over them yeah. saying, "Hey, this is how it used to be," you know, I just got done talking to. Uh, Bobby from Shut, Bobby. Up and, Shut Up and Train, you know, and we talked about that. We, right. we we talk about that senior man mentality and, you know, not every new firefighter, mm-hmm. especially, you know, today's, today's firefighter. Yeah. But I mean, you know what I mean? So not every new firefighter coming in is going directly to the senior man right. or senior woman and saying, hey, how was it? Right. Back then. How did you do it? Right. You know, it, I, I feel like it's almost like our responsibility mm-hmm. to grab those junior members and yeah. those new firefighters and tell them, Hey, this is how it used to be here. Right. This is the vision we have and this is the way we want it to go. Right. You know, and I think they should be part of that process, but Oh, totally. Do you, do you find it that in, um, unless in your he, house, here, are people doing that? It's, um, it's coming back. I okay. mean, there are guys, I and mean, we're pretty open with each other here. This is definitely a, uh, a very close knit, I mean, we'll go after each other, like every family. You'll yell at each other. You'll hate each other one day, but you're, like today, you know, the job gets done. Um, you know, Monday night apparently, and I was I was working Monday, so I wasn't here for the fire, but when things were happening left and right, you know, everybody bonded together. But, I, you know, I think it's huge. I mean, I, in, in all my time here, even before I was ever on the job and I was just volunteering here, you know, I would talk to the old guys. Like, like after drill, I'd sit, and I'm sure there's even two, three guys back there in the uh, in the lounge hanging out. You just sit and talk. Hey, how is this going? I have an idea like this. Am I crazy? You know, hey, I want to be a chief one day. What are, you know, what's, what do I got to do? Am I doing the right things? So, you know, and it's humbling and really crazy to, you know, like one day I got a call from one of them. Hey, I got a question for you. I was like, what? He's like, I got to run this by you. What are you talking about? I I go to you for advice. He's like, no, I I want to know what, you know, what you do. It's like, damn. Yeah. So it is. That's uh, when you know you at least made some type of impact. Right, you, some you, kind of you did something right. Right, yeah. and, and recently I, I um, was asked to be the keynote speaker at, right. at a grad, fire department graduation, and my and initially I'm like, why? Right, <laughs> like right. There, there's so many other firefighters and smoke eaters out there that you know that you could have asked that, mm-hmm. in my opinion, would be far better than me. Right, but it's just, it was humbling. Right, to think that it's, it's, someone sees something that maybe we're not seeing. You know, so that that's good that you have that. Yeah, it's it, it's definitely unique and it's definitely. Uh, you know, it puts you in a weird position sometimes, you know, like yeah. with with evolution of, you know, the guy, let's call it the uh, succession plans and officers and who's who and membership and attitudes and people just living. But, you know, it's crazy to think now, you know, where was I 10 years ago versus now and just understanding life a little bit more. You know, you know when somebody can't make it, but they text you, hey, I'm going to be late to drill. I took the time to text you to say he's going to be late. If he's got an ounce to do that... So come late, thanks. I know you're busy. Yeah. You got a life, but you're but, but you're, you're still coming. But you're coming. You're still right. here. Exactly. So, what, so as a, as a uh, as a lieutenant now, right? I'm going to ask you. I ask a lot of a lot of uh, guests the mm-hmm. same question. Most of the guests uh, are 
have a little more time. Right. But so I'm curious to see what you have to say. The new member that's coming in, mm-hmm. right? They haven't been through fire school yet. Right. They're walking through the door and they want an application. What are you saying to them? I split it up a little bit. So okay. I'll give you a little quick story on that. So what one of our well, right now he's my senior lieutenant just because of how things have happened. But uh no, he's a great kid. But when he joined uh, maybe four or five years ago, first, you know, I was that was my last year's captain here. You know, he came to a couple of drills, said, How you doing? Blah blah blah, got the application from the chief because here you go straight to the chief. I just took him to the walls. I mean, you know, you saw the walls just got redone, so none of the right. stuff's up right now, but I took him, showed him, you know, we used to have uh, pictures of all the members of the flag behind him. I go, this is your guys. You're now here. It's cool. Don't worry about it. This is where we were. These are some ex-chiefs. You know, these are some trophies from parades. We used to go to, like, you know, where you guys are from. We went to parades down there. We went to parades in upstate Connecticut. This place was a big parade show town. That's the history of it. Um you know, he went through all that, like, these are your officers, this is our mutual aid, this is who we get along with, this is who we don't get along with. He laid it out right in the open. And the kid, you know, he's got life going on now, but, you know, he, he's, I think he's successful. He he gets it. You know, and that's that's a big thing. If you can get it, you get it. Right. You know, we had a fire here hmm, two winters ago. It definitely wasn't last winter. Um, and, um, you know, he was the officer of the first two truck. And he had his helmet cam on. So, you know, after a couple of days later, he's like, hey, yeah. Uh, you know, it was a funny moment. I had a, I, I took a door for him, but I was like, oh, go back like two minutes when you're pulling up. And just to see him, you know, turn around, tell the guys, you know, don't move. I'm going to get out, get the truck in position, then we're all going to break. You know, I was like, this kid's got four years in the fire service. Wow. And he gets it. Yeah, that's good. So it's like, you know, I think I did all right with, introducing to who's who this is what's expected of you x y and z but to your question now with being a younger officer with you know like guys that are they have families you know Mm -hmm. 30 40 50 years old joining um it seems like there really isn't any bs they understand it like you come here like this is yes this is volunteer but you tell them straight up like yep you know all your time's appreciated you're gonna have to do x y and z but at the end of the day you know this can kill you Period. You know, everybody's all, let's not talk about this, let's not talk about that. But volunteer or not, it's whatever's yeah, going to get you, it's going to get you. I, the, I say all the time, the fire has no clue right. whether you get a check or you don't get a check. Exactly. So, you know, you tell that, you break them with that, and they're like, um, I'm like, well, you still want to do it? Yeah, why not? Okay, well, I may be 27, but I've been here 10 years, and I've been in some busy places. I'm not saying you should listen to me, but I'll teach you what I know. But remember to go to these guys, these ex-chiefs that are on this side of the wall if you feel you have to talk to somebody else or you want different opinions. I tell them straight up. I go, this is how I've done it. Yeah. Go so, ahead, so your, run. So your message then is to inform them of as, as much information as yeah, possible? I, I, I don't think I do overkill with it, but, you know, I do. I lay the groundwork out. You know, this is where we are today. These are the people that you got to go to. Any questions? Here's my number. Have you had anybody come to to join and say, "Yeah, you know what? This is just too much of a commitment for me. I'm yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce out," or or do you find most of the people stay? Most people stay. I mean, we had one great guy that was a fireman somewhere else that jo- that joined, but you know, he has a fan like just got married, was having a kid. You know, I still I'll tell text him once in a while, but you know, I don't break his chops. He's not here. He's got life. You know, it's cool, dude. If you need something, call us. We'll be there. Him. Yeah. That's it. It's difficult now, like like we said right. earlier. You know, the volunteer service. Um, Guys are working sometimes two and three jobs right. uh, to support support their families, and and in most cases, both spouses are working. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's that double that commi- right. double that commitment. So it's not as easy as it used to be, and and I think volunteerism as a whole is down. Mm-hmm. You know, I I see but it's everywhere, dude. You I got- was just going to say that it's it doesn't matter where you're at. I mean, right. whether you're in Allendale or right. you're in Stafford, New Jersey, it's, right? And you know what? It's you see it, like, you know, the, the excuse is, oh, when there's a job, everybody shows up. Yes and no. You know, there's been some times where you pull up to, you know, we'll wait, we'll go minimum. Then you pull up somewhere else and everybody else is minimal. It's the way it is. I don't want to call it the way it is now. But times are changing. There's something's got to be done. You know, you see, like, you know, Pennsylvania, Maryland, some Rockland areas are doing duty crew systems, are doing living programs. Are they better? Are they worse? That's for the company to find out. You know, everybody's going to have issues whether yeah. in in uh, starting it up, and the guys are going to get upset. You know, the town uh, on the other side of the uh, the highway over there had a duty crew program for a couple of years. Uh, I thought it was the best thing in the world. 
that's why I wanted to be a career fireman. We did that. We we did twelve hour shifts, night times, and uh, weekends. And dude, it was you know, you rode with four, uh, three other people, it's like a firehouse. You go to drill. You get you order takeout, and you run calls. You know, we picked up a lot of other calls. You know, medicals and basic like let's call it like a DPW type of call, like a service call kind of stuff. But right. I'm definitely in favor of doing. It was crews. awesome. I, I I always even try to right keep putting that bug in the ear at, right. at the firehouse because I I you know where I work at the pay department right. you know it's just it it's sort of seamless you know mm-hmm. the guys you're working with and you already have everything mm-hmm. mapped out for right, right. for your tour but back at the volunteer house it's like you know mm-hmm. um you you never know who you're going to be right. with right and but that's if, and like here that's it's not that it's tough but you know. You get a kid that's that's been here five years straight every day, you know, solid dude, and then you get, you know, a kid that's been here five years but in and out. Right. They must have been the best of friends or whatever, and then, you know, you do see the differences between guys on the fire ground. You know, one of the guys that uh, that I work with, you know, they break his chops, but he's top notch. You know, we had a, the one day of the Waldux fire a couple of weeks ago. He had, I drove because... We don't have a lot of drivers here because we'll get into that driver training program. But, you know, he had the seat, he had the front seat, and we had a full young crew in the back, four guys in the back. It was awesome. You pull up, you're like, I'm a, I'm, I'll am I'm, just be the driver today. Like, I don't got the seat. You play Mr. Lieutenant. You want to be lieutenant today? Go through it. Does it. You know, it was a CO alarm. He goes through the whole, ask the, the, the residents if they have symptoms, nothing. It goes through the house. Everything's clear. Blah, blah, blah. Perfect report to the chief. And I'm just looking at the chief like, my man, this guy's got it. People can break his shots, but he's got it. Is it good? Is it good? Um Let's see how I rephrase this. Being so involved in training and right. being a lieutenant at this right. time, is it nice to see that progression so early? Do you expect Man. it? From this, from this guy, yeah. But okay. I'm saying what, what the coolest thing is to see when I was the training officer years ago and seeing who's up and running right now, you can see the guys that I was teaching and molding back then are still going forward now. So there was a time, like... I don't got the stats on me. Not that it's a big deal, but when I was a, the uh, the TO back then, we put like ten or twelve guys through fire one in, in a year or two. That's a and lot. That's for us. That's a big deal. That's huge, man. And then you know half of those guys went through fire two and fire god. You know whatever. You know I don't know if you guys have that down here, like fire ground officer development. Yeah. Or well, like they would just nonstop in the books, nonstop going to the academies. That's great. And now you look at you know you go through the online system, see all the documentation. You're like, these guys are, you know, we have paperwork on the guys. We have files that are this thick on our members. We may run 250 calls a year, but you know, they went, they did their time studying. They, they're going through evolutions. What it, what it does show to me anyway, is is a commitment, right? You know, it it shows a commitment. It shows a drive to want to learn and educate yourself. And like you talked earlier, and I agree, I think that the education part of the fire service is important now. You know, it wasn't something that, was huge back in the day. Right, it was different. Yeah, it's different, but it's 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 uh, it's getting back. Yeah, there. I mean these kids are like, you know, yes, yeah, so we're just a fire department. We're not a super rescue squad. We're just you know basic or primary duties, fires, or you know fire, yeah, fire alarms, suppression, yeah. fire suppression, and you know entrapments. That's basically the two big titles here. But you know these guys pick it up. You know, you know when I was doing it, I was sending guys to. Um, Search C out in Colorado for, you know, once we found out crude oil was coming through here, we, were, we sent a handful of guys out through the DHS training out there. A bunch of guys went Pretty to progressive, right, right? New Mexico for the for the uh, incident response to terrorist bombing classes. Like, the yeah, guys are... Right, right. He's laughing over there because li- we literally just talked about it on the way, right, on the way up here. Bro, it's the best stuff. I mean, yeah. it's available. Like, and that's, that's where... I don't want to say I don't have patience for some places that break your chops, but it's available. Your training officer or chief just has to sign off on it, and everything is on DHS. That's what the grants are for. Right. You know, continuous open enrollment. So, but again, like you said, the commitment. If the guys are going to do it, yeah, there, has, there right. has to be a commitment. Right. You know, if there's no commitment, then, it, you know, it's that whole, you know, bring right. leading the horse of water thing. Yeah. So, tell me about the, the commitment here for, for the volunteers right. in, this, in this particular fire mm-hmm. department here. Are you starting to see that? more members are staying and trying to keep a footprint or do you have some members that stay for a little bit and they're on their way? Um, so one thing that I do really support mosquitoes are getting to us. I know, they got me. Um, one thing I really support to guys and this is where growing up it was funny until now to realize things was uh, like this was my home, always been my home but 
I joined other places, local, you know, departments. Because, you know, there's sometimes, back in the day, you weren't on the alarm card for something. Or, you know, you're not going to get me chilled for this kind of call or something. So you would respond there instead of that, you know. And primarily the guys that still do that still come here first. Pager, you know, no matter where the incident is, they'll come here and ride out of here. But what that does Why do you is, think that is? Well, it's their home. I guess maybe because that's the way we've developed. It's like a unofficial understanding kind of thing. I don't know. You know, but at the same time, it allows them to see how other places work, mm-hmm. what other things happen, I other g- kinds of equipment. Oh, it broad- broadens their horizons. I agree. So it's not like a, a dig at, oh, well, this guy's on like three departments. Yeah, it's a lot. I get it. But at the same time, it's like you can go to these other two places, see how they run it, and bring it back and make your own place better. Yeah. So. And sometimes you got to step out of your comfort zone. Oh, yeah. Because now you're somewhere else where you're the junior guy. Yeah, you've got 10 years here, but you join across the tracks, and now you're the junior guy. Mm-hmm. All right, I remember how to do this. Let's go through it again. I, <laughs> f- funny story, man. I, I joined a company, and I had a lot of time on it at that, mm-hmm. p- at that point. I had moved, you right. know, and uh, once I moved, I'm like, I was debating whether I should stay on my original right, right. company or, or join another place. And so I opted to join the place because it was closer. And I'm like, right. eh. I literally knew, like, two people there. Okay. So a little apprehensive, you know. First, first real fire, you know, was a working fire, you know, and, you know, he also looks back and I'm, I'm back there and I have all this time on and, and training and he's like, right. hey, hit the hydrant. I'm like, wow, man. Like it, sure. it was, you know, <laughs> right. But you talk know. about, you know, bring you back to center, man. Like, right. So then I'm, and, and what was funny to me was here I am getting off, off the rig, you know, <laughs> with the hydrant bag. I'm like, I can't believe mm. that, like all this time that I have on, yeah. I'm, I'm the guy hitting hydrant. But, but I think it, it, you know, it, it brought me back to center a little right. bit too. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know, right. we, we all, we all have to right. do, do, or do, do our do jobs. jobs. Right. Exactly. You know, whatever yeah. job you're assigned, that's your job. Exactly. You know? So, I mean, what, what's the future for flow and vent? Oh, I don't know. I mean, mean, because, you you know, you downplay it. So what's the future of? I mean, we definitely like to keep, you know, becoming like a training. I hate to use the word company, but, you know, I still want to go out and spread out the knowledge, you know, because the way I think of something, you might be the guru on something, but I may have one little detail that's totally different. Right. And that detail may help or hurt or whatever. Might change your life one day. Right. You never know. Um, But... You know, at one point we tried doing a lot of videos, but like you said, time, like I mean, you guys are here late. We're all late. We're yeah. doing stuff. It's it's the time is tough. Yes. Um, so I mean, we did a couple of videos in the basement up in a, a Mawa Company Four, um, which is awesome. Their training facility. But it's I feel like we're gonna keep pushing towards more content. Um, we're definitely open. Like the biggest thing I like to do, the way this kind of started going hands on, was just you know guys would call me like, hey, we were ju- we're just doing a basic drill tonight. Can you guys just stop by and help us out with it? Not like we're going to teach it. Right. We'll just be there, give some tips and tricks throughout the program or whatever their training officer or their officers were doing. That's something that I'd like to keep doing. You know, not doing full blown classes like tonight. So me being more of like a resource to yeah. a training to a training right. officer. Right. So like one, th- I don't know, a couple podcasts ago on our feed, we put out that the one thing I really would like to do, which is it's just more research based, is put together an inventory of living programs, so that. Not saying that that's the primary flow event thing, but just so that somebody has somewhere, or you know, let's say I want to go to a school in, in Colorado. Well, I'm also a huge buff and I want to ride out there. You know, you could go somewhere and be like, well, who's got a living program? What schools are that closest? What do those schools offer? Just to keep bridging that gap between the fire service and academics. Because hmm. um, at one point I was on the, uh, the uh, ISFSI's. I called the research and development committee, um, but it was definitely called something else. I totally not good with names, but one thing that I kept pushing was developing a an inventory of you know colleges and who can go where. Yes, there's the Oklahoma State, you know Jersey City University fire science program, but there's nothing. You know, you go you go to a high school like, hey, I want to be a doctor. Well, I'll go to any of these schools. Right. There's nothing for the fire service. It really isn't. You can go to the the uh, National Fire Academy's website and they'll show you like six. Right. But that's it. There's plenty more schools that have little, you know, associate programs or bachelor program. It's out there. You just got to bring bridge it still. That's pretty cool though. It's a pretty cool concept. It's it's definitely different. It you is know, different. You definitely yeah. get your your uh, balls busted for it, but I don't know, man. But it's, it's information that that's good for someone that's 
right. but looking for that. You know, right. It's, it's for. different. Do you, where do you go to get it? That's a perfect right. idea. So that's not flow and vent is, but that's just something right. that I really believe in. Well, while, while we're talking about flow and vent, um, I although this is a, a podcast show, I'm, I'm certainly <laughs> uh, of sound mind, and I realize that people need other options and mm-hmm. people need to you know experiment with different uh, right. podcasts and, and be able to listen to different guys right. and shows. Uh, I support your show. I think yeah, it's great, man. I've listened, and uh, why don't you tell uh, everyone how how they can listen to your show on? Uh, uh, it's iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher, and just Google or you know just search Flow Event. There's I think right now we just did episode twenty four. Cool. So it used to, we, the beginning was crazy. We did like three in a month. The next one was like you know just kept hammering them out, and I was like, you know what, dude, let's slow oh, down. I, trust me, I know all. Let's about do one a month. I know all about that. And guarantee <laughs> one a month because then there was like three months we didn't do anything, and then people started yeah. asking like, hey. You guys still around? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? It's, yeah, we're, we're there. We're just not together right now. It, it's cool that, uh, that you know we're talking tonight because you're, you're the first guy that I've talked to that has a podcast. <laughs> you know, so it's interesting that we can bounce right. stuff off each other. I mean, you right, right. you understand the yeah. struggle and all the this electronics and technology and and right, you know right. it's nothing ever works right, man. You know how it is. Every there's always <laughs> some some glitch, some ticks going to come out and get yeah. you every time. Yeah, it's it's it, but it's fun. And I what I like about doing this is. Being able to talk to, right. just talk to guys, man. Talk that's, to girls about stuff, you know. That's it, and you know, like, and you can see, you know, if if you do listen to the our podcast, you do hear certain like. There's no like, you know, you have no script, we have no script. Right. The only thing we'll have is like, we're going to go here and talk about training. Like yesterday, you know, we're going to progress. They have a living program. I know it's so successful. That's just one of the topics we're right. going to talk about. That's it. Besides that, it's it's. You know, there's some days that I'm doing stupid accents. Mikey's yelling at me. Chad's in the corner, and Mike's, you know, doing curls, and we're just staring at you. And then Danny walks in. He's like, "You guys are just dumb." <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Those are the best. Those are the best episodes. Yeah. People are like, you know, you get the personalities behind it, and you know, this is the first time that I'm on a camera and talking, besides in a training video. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's cool. It's, it's definitely different. It is different, and and you know. Yeah, obviously, I'm still not even used to it, and I've got a couple episodes in, and I'm still not even used to it. Right. But, but what I like about it is, like you said earlier, people know what you're doing, in there, and when they realize you're passionate about it, they right. they go from from breaking your chops to now like, now yeah. that now almost patting you on the back, going, "Hey, man, keep keep doing right. what you're doing. I, right. like, I like what you're doing." You know, and, and it's funny. Like at first, this area when Flow Movement started up, when they were like, oh, "These young kids are complaining. Like, what do you know? You've been here three years." Yeah, but the other kid that's in this group's in PG, and he's an officer. Pretty busy down there. Different, completely different animal. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, you little... one kid's from here, one kid's from there. Different mutual aid system. You know, when I, when I was in uh, CU Boulder, I, you know, I worked, not worked, but interned for a division of fire safety through their fire department. And that that was a whole different experience. Right. Working with, um, you know, I wanted to be a fireman out there, but at the same time, you know, they put me on tasks such as, uh, like, my, my, my project for the for the course was doing a, a, fire, a dormitory fire safety class. They're like, oh, you're from Jersey? I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, what about Seton Hall Fire? I was like, yeah. Okay, yeah, I read about it. And then, you know, then you start meeting, like, the lady that uh, used to work there, Sherry Kenyon, was involved in the campus fire safety, like, the national program. You know, and, and she was like, well, I spoke here, I spoke there. I've been to Jersey. I was like, wow, the world's tiny. It is a tiny, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it, it, it really is a tiny world. You know, it absolutely is. It's, it's crazy. It's definitely, uh, it's pretty cool. Well, listen, man. I, I appreciate you having me here. Yeah, of course, dude. It's and uh, you know, it was it was a fun it was a fun time here, man. I I, I enjoyed being able to watch you, you right. drill, and uh, you know, I I've always supported Flow Events since I met you guys. Yeah. We had such a good time at FDIC. <laughs> that was funny. You know, I was like, oh, it's Frank. Yeah, and Billy's here. There's our <laughs> hockey hockey our hockey team's goalies walking around. <laughs> I didn't uh, know. Crazy. I didn't yeah, know he, he was a goalie. Uh, you know, we had we had the uh, the Bergen backdraft hockey team for a while, and. Um, yeah, he's he's our goalie, you know, over the last couple of years, and it was just funny to see him because you, you never miss that mustache. That dude's got you know the, he's got the flow and the mustache. And you're like, this yeah, guy's everywhere. I tell you what, man, the there's something to be said about the fire service and hockey Bro. because you know Bobby played hockey too. Yeah, and I I was talking to him today, right, and right. he's like, I played hockey. I'm like, oh my god, you too? Yeah, it's I like everyone because I, I play too. Right, right. And everyone I talk to, they like, oh, we play hockey. I'm like, we should get like we should get alumni game together. Imagine, but, that. but we're so old, man. We'll break a hip. Nah, you'd be <laughs> good, man. We st- we're still playing. Now we just, we just changed our name around. That's it. Like you know, yeah. the the Bergen Backdraft team used to be a lot of Mawa guys before I was even 
of a you know when I was a junior member. That's awesome. And then it just you know then we picked up some guys in the area, and, and it was cool about the team is that you see you know where everybody got hired, a couple of cops here and there, and it's just the the discussions. We may not play as the backdraft anymore, but the conversations are still there. That's cool. So that's you know like one kid plays for you know we played for the, I I don't play for the FNBA team a lot because it's more of like a South Jersey connect, but. The one time you play, you know, you meet up with these guys again. You're like, "Yo, what's up?" And it's just, like you said, that experience of just saying hi again. The, the whole, my favorite part of doing this show is just the networking, man. Right. Meeting the people you get to meet, and uh, like yourself and, and and other guys, and Ray over there, Crazy Ray. I mean, it's good that you get to meet all these good people. And uh, what what the last the last thing I'll ask you right. before I let you off the hot seat. I know oh. everybody's got to go. Nah. Uh, last last question I have for you is that uh, is there one person in your life uh, that that mentor mm. to you, if you will, that person that kind of kept their hand on your you know hand on your shoulder right. and kept pushing you? I know um, it's a tough question. It's definitely a tough question. I mean, in, I mean off the top of my head, I, I want to say it's a group of people. You know, I can't pin at work. You know, there's a handful of guys, but again, it's what makes work interesting is that it's a group effort. Yes, there's. Those one or two guys that are always like, I know everything about you. Keep keep doing what you're doing. You'll be fine here. But that that group effort, mm-hmm. and you can see it with you know uh, what's going on now with the new probe. Like any family it's a group, and father, fathers, uncles, cousins. Yeah, are you I first mean, generation? I'm first generation American. So my parents came here from Poland. You know, separate times, and you know, I just kind of did this. Honestly, I joined because my dad, you know, my dad's a woodworker around here and he knew a guy that was an electrician, blah, blah, blah. And he ended up being chief here in another town. So he said, call this guy. You live in that town. I joined and fell in love with it. Yeah. So it's not like a crazy story. Like, Oh, you know, this guy's uncle is a fireman. He's a daddy. Was- well, most of the people you talk to, um, you know, like raised dad was FDNY. Right, right. I mean, at some point there's some type of push from the family, right. you know? And, um, yeah. it's no, interesting. Not in my family. <laughs> It's interesting to. Uh, I'll wait for the train to there, go by. There's a big train for you. That's a lot of people going on to Port Jervis. Uh, it's interesting to talk to guys that right. have no family history in the fire service right. and that are starting like, right. from scratch. Yeah, and it's crazy to think that. I mean, there's there's a handful of guys here, older uh, ex chiefs that you know, like you said, drill night after they're still hanging out, you'd go talk to them for an hour. Like, I mean, there were some nights you're sitting here late talking to guys yeah. about stories about, well, I want to do this, I want to try this. Um, but now, you know, as you're like, you know, I was telling Ray earlier, like my fiance's uncle just retired out of 166 and the other one's a uh, assistant chief in the FDNY and they don't talk to you firematically. You know, there's none of that. Like, hey, uh, but once you say something like oh, I was tillering today, like oh, yeah, I spent some time in Chinatown on the tiller. Like, <laughs> I thought you were just driving in the, in Brooklyn. He's like, eh, it's been, I tillered here and there, you know, and then those stories come out and that, but that's what makes it like, son of a bitch, this guy's crazy. So yeah. it's, that's awesome. That is good stuff, man. Um, I don't know, man. It's, it's I'm going to keep saying it's a group of people. I mean, my family's, well, you know, they're in the beginning they broke my jobs, you know, because you know you come to America, puppy, you you know be a doctor, be smart, do all this kind of stuff. But then, you know, you could kind of be a doctor of the fire service. There's yeah. a couple guys out there, still new, you know, this is still a new field. But yeah, it's the oldest trade in America. Let's let's, let's be real, one of the, you know top three oldest tra- jobs. Right, being a firefighter, absolutely, but not like a doctor of it right you know, everybody can be a doctor of, of music of cert, you know medical doctor dentists and whatnot yeah. you want to call them but not at the oldest job no yeah. you know so where's that gap well yeah. listen I, I can tell you I'm, I'm, I'm kind of an older guy now but I, I see a very bright future for you yeah. I, I see a lot of good things happening for you in the, in, in the future yeah, I appreciate it and, uh, and again it was, a, it was an honor to talk to you I appreciate you having me at your house it was a far <laughs> it was a far drive but I, I'm going to have to keep Ray awake on the way home <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a we did that. It's definitely a ride. Well, I appreciate it, man. No, thanks, thanks so much for, com- for of coming. Of course. Having Anytime. Having here, yeah, it was a good time. For the other place from up north. See, so, you know, yeah, well, see, anybody, he, he's, that's how I know you watch the show because you gave me a patch, man. Well, the, well I gave him gotta, a couple earlier, too. Got to so have a patch. Was, and I got a t-shirt. Which and Ray awesome. got a t-shirt, too. So, <laughs> all, all your uh, all your guys blew out of here pretty quick, but yeah. I got you an official oh, Timmy appreciate it. patch. Thank I mean, you, thank anybody you. on the show. And then I got you some uh, some helmet decals. Sweet. So if you want to hand these out to the to yeah, the, them, the boys uh, the boys I'll and girls, the ones that help you out, out the most. Of course, man. So there you go. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank everyone, you. everyone loves decals. It's, it's a candy. candy. It is for firefighters. Just stickers on decals. Bottles. Yeah, decals. 
And yeah, the the funny story about this. All these decals are like from people that right. I met, you know, th- right. from the show and stuff. And there you are, right there. Look at this custom faded. Custom faded. <laughs> Get you well, some tr- new ones. Trust me, this this uh, water bottle seen some seen some problems. Oh man. <laughs> so, all right. So here we are at uh, Allendale, New okay. Jersey. And we're living in Allendale. Clearly, he's <laughs> a much better firefighter than he is a singer. Yeah, yeah. but else uh, loves to hang over. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, these mics are pretty cool. They make yeah, you feel man, like you're I, a singer. We, we definitely have to invest Flow Event crew in some technology. Here. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, episode twenty six here at Pin the Cube Podcast. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. Same thing with our Facebook page and our website. It's finally a website from like wow. two thousand nineteen. Nice. It's Sweet. actually pretty cool. Yeah, I like it a lot. So. Um, be sure to check that out. And again, episode twenty-seven coming at you. That's a uh, that's a a surprise. You're going to be surprised as you Whoa. sit in this seat for twenty-seven. I'm not not this guy. I know you're not expecting it. So <laughs> be safe. Take care of each other. And as always, check out Flow and Vent if you want. All right, take care. Thank you for listening to another Pin the Cue production. Be sure to like and subscribe on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. For more information on Pin the Cue productions, visit www.pinthecue.com.